Hello everyone, welcome back to the CSFL kickoff show podcast. And well, it's going to be an interesting one today. We're going, we're nearly at the midway mark of the season, and we're going to do a little bit of talking about how teams are performing to date. You know, what expectations maybe at the beginning of the season have not been met by some of the teams. Some teams that have been overperforming, um, you know, really surprising. And well, to try and break that down, I've got I've got two guests today. Really, first one up, we've got the uh, Cincinnati Bengals GM Stuart. Stuart, welcome back to the show. Um, it's good to have you on. Tough schedule for you guys this year, but um, it's it's not looking too bad, I would have to say. It has definitely been. Uh, I'm just glad to be done with the NFC North. I don't have to see you anymore. <laughs> I don't have to see uh, anyone from uh, that division, which seems to be just one of the toughest divisions in the uh, uh, in, in our league. And uh, we're looking at what uh, I'm three and four, and we have uh, four losses, and it's all against the NFC North. So. Uh, we're happy to just stay in the a- AFC for the most part the rest of this year. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it obviously had a good win um, on the uh, the Sim today against the Patriots. But, you know, you are up against our second host um, for the episode today, Toasty from the Bills. You, you both playing each other next week, but I guess, um, Toasty, your season's been going away, going, you've know, been working away pretty well to date, top of the division, looking like you're in a, a good position, position to get back to the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, it'll be a little bit harder to get to the Super Bowl this year with the Ravens if Flacco stays healthy, along with a couple other teams. But yeah, the season's going pretty good. Um, I wish my defense, pass defense was working a little bit better than it currently is, but it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, there's always there's always things to tweak at this time of the season, and always things to look at, and uh, you know that's why we're we're here today. We're going to talk a little bit about the league and teams in general, and, and see how things have been going as we we're nearly at that halfway mark of, of the season. So, I think we should just dive straight into it and just and just have a little chat about about what we're seeing. So, I think maybe we'll I'll open up to Stuart first. I mean, are there any teams that have been surprising you for 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 good or or, or for, for for bad reasons? Um, as we, we get to the halfway mark, where would you like to uh, to take the discussion first? Well, uh, I mean, one of the teams that I think has been doing extremely well, probably much better than I expected, uh, is the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, the Chiefs, uh, I think, were, I probably predicted them to be kind of a middling team. And here they are at uh, six and one in the AFC West, but uh, of course they got some stiff competition with both uh, the Broncos and the Raiders also at six and one. Um, I wonder how much of the AFC West though is real and how much of it is uh, puffing because they are playing the NFC West uh, and the NFC West is as weak as the AFC West is strong. So in the AFC West, you got San Fran, you got Arizona and LA Rams that have a combined record of two and 19. Um, And those are the teams that have been getting played. I think Kansas City had three of their wins against them. But nonetheless, I mean, they're three and uh, right now, Kansas City is three and one in their conference. Uh, So they're still doing extremely well in the AFC itself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Toasty, what's, what's your take? And I think you had quite an interesting observation um, before we, we came on to the show about maybe why Kansas are, are doing so well this season um, due to some of their off-season changes. Yep, so I think they did have a GM change, right? I believe they did, yes. I think that's helping out along with the addition of Sam Bradford. Right now they are two wins away from their record last season, which was 8-7-1. and one. And right now they're looking like one of the top passing attacks in the league. And last season they were about dead middle at 12. Yeah, I think, yeah, so. I think yeah. that the addition of Sam Bradford and also other than that, their off season was very quiet except for the GM change. But what the new GM has brought in and is starting to use seems to be really clicking for that team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the GM is is, is Decomet um, for the for the digital server, the username, and yeah, certainly he's come in and, and 
kind of, I think, I think it's fair to say he's recognised some of the positives that the Kansas team had, which was they had some good, good receiving options. They had some pretty good defensive options. And basically, the thing that I've, I've talked about for a while with Kansas City is that they've just not had that quarterback. They they had Pat Devlin, who they, they basically trundled along with for multiple seasons, and he probably wasn't going to be good enough to take them to that next level. They are always in there or thereabouts. But yeah, I mean, Sam Bradford, I've got his numbers up on the screen here. He's, his quarterback rating is certainly the best it has ever been in, in the league to date, really, 101.8. Dwarfing absolutely everything he did with the Rams. And well, his, his completion percentages are up. His touchdown percentages are up. It's, it's, it's all very, very positive things. And I think it just goes to show that if you can get the right type of quarterback in, if you've got the other pieces around it, then, then you're always in good shape. Obviously, they did pick up Antonio Brown as well, it's probably fair to say. Um, I, I believe um, his, his numbers have actually you know, got better since he was originally with the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs um, from the original season, actually. I think, no, sorry, second season. But his numbers are looking pretty, pretty strong as well. Um, he's, he's scoring touchdowns, getting percentages. Um, his numbers have actually looked pretty good. But yeah, I mean, Kansas City, I mean, I guess... We can sit here and say that, as you said, Stuart, that their their schedule is probably a bit lighter touch than some of the other teams in the AFC. But you've got to beat what's in front of you. They're certainly doing that at the moment. And looking at the MVP projections that uh, HTML has, right now there's one player that is not a quarterback in the MVP race, and that'd be their running back, Jamal Charles. Who has been is actually having a stellar season? Yes, yeah, he certainly is. So I have to agree. I mean, six hundred twenty-seven yards, four touchdowns um, from rushing, two touchdowns from receiving. He's also he's he's been a bit more dynamic. I think it's fair to say than probably we've seen him in other teams as well. In that he is getting a lot more targets to date than than he has done on on other teams. Um, so that that certainly has been a factor there, utilizing Jamal Charles not just as a running back, but also as an interesting receiving option, which seems to be paying dividends for them so far. I mean, Toasty, we've, we've talked a lot about the offense here to date, but uh, you know, is there anything else in terms of maybe the defensive numbers that we we should probably be talking about with Kansas? I mean, they they held a couple of teams to under twenty early on the season. I mean, it's been slipped a little bit over the past few games. But, you know, it looks like there's a pretty stellar defense there as well that's, that's helping them. Um, you know, if I say looks, they're, they're, yeah. not, they're fourth in points in, in, in the league in, in points allowed. so It looks like they're about middle with the yards, but it seems like they have really instituted the bend, don't break method where they give up yards, but don't really give up points. Yeah, I think I think that's fair to say. I mean, it's really interesting from my perspective because I would say their backs are not particularly the best. I mean, they've probably got the best safety pairing in the league in in, in Carr and Flowers, which is probably means that they can skimp a little bit on the on the backs because they do have that that coverage there. I mean, I do like their front line of um, of uh, Wilkinson, Houston, and uh, and Crick. Uh, an interesting front front line, front three there that can be utilized. But yeah, I mean. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what do you guys think? I mean, they're six and one. Um, I mean, it's Stuart, six and one at the moment. Do you do you think this will will carry on for them, or do we think that we've um, you know probably got more a couple more division games to play? They've also got to play the Raiders back to back in sixteen week sixteen and seventeen. Still got to play the Titans, the Broncos, you know, the Seahawks and the Texans, all teams that will be vying for a playoff slot. Do you think this will hold out for the the Kansas City Chiefs, or do you think we're going to see a bit of regression over the remaining half of the season? I, I, I think personally, next... I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I, that's all right. I, I personally think there'll be some regression. If you look at the Chiefs' schedule, um, they, they've got the Broncos and Raiders ahead of them, uh, and they've got to play the Raiders in Week 16 and 17. The Broncos, they've lost to once, and they have to play them again in Week 12. And if you look at the stand, uh, you know, just the the amount of points that the Broncos and Raiders put up. I mean, you're looking at the Broncos have already put up 284 points this year. Uh, and Raiders have put up 213. But Kansas City has only done 164, which is somewhere, you know, middle of the pack. Uh, their defense may carry them for a couple of these games. I think that Kansas City is probably looking at a wild card spot. 
Um, I think most of the AFC West will probably get into the playoffs at this moment in time. Uh, but I don't think that uh, you're going to see them overtake the Raiders or the Broncos this year. And, and what, what do you think, Toasty? Do you, do you agree with that? We lost him. I believe we may have lost Toasty. Okay, I'll, I'll give my oh, view. Oh, sorry, I was uh, muted. Go on, go on. I was muted, we're, sorry. We're interested in your view. I mean, um, Stuart is obviously saying that he, he feels they're probably going to be a wild card slot team in, in this season, but probably not going to overtake the Raiders and the Broncos. Um, interested in your thoughts on that. I think it's really going to depend on their next four games where they play the Texans, and then they go to Seattle, and then to Tennessee, and then they play the Broncos again. If they can get through this stretch at like three and one, I think they could really give the Broncos a run for their money for the division. I I, I honestly think this division is so so competitive and so up for grabs. I think it, it's it's a fascinating thing to say that we will, I would say I would compare the way we're looking at this division now to how we were looking at the AFC South a couple of seasons ago, where we had the Colts, the Jaguars, and the Titans. Basically, all of them would win twelve games, pretty much eleven and twelve games for the season, and it would just be a a case of all three of them probably ending up in in the playoffs in some fashion, both taking the the wild card slots away from the rest of the AFC. I, I kind of agree with both your assessments. I think this could be the division that takes three slots out of the playoffs from from the rest of that conference i just i th- yeah i agree toasty with what you were saying i think seattle tech and houston will be a and titans will be a interesting next trio of games that they've got if they can get through that unscathed and then going into the remaining couple of games then then they can afford a couple of losses probably at that point and still still make it but i think yeah i agree with, with your your shout out for them to begin with Stuart. they certainly are a team that deserve a bit of recognition and, and certainly the, D- the GM, um, Decom Comet, I think it is how you say it, it's, it's done a phenomenal job with this Kansas team from, from where they were last season. So let's move on to a, to another team. I guess we've talked, Stuart's introduced one. Let's get Toasty to, to introduce one. Is there a team that has surprised you so far this season for, for either for good or, or for bad reasons? I think the team that has really surprised me the most would be the Saints, which shouldn't be too surprising given who their GM is, but I expected it to be a little bit longer of a turnaround. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I guess it's interesting to get your take on this because I think if we looked at the Saints at the start of the offseason before Zach, the former Green Bay Packers GM, came over... They were probably a team that was a bottom three team in the league, I believe, last season. So I guess in your 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 view, Toasty, ha- what do you think has been the main driving force? Has it been the the GM or the vast number of changes? Uh, what what do you think has kind of made this team go from being a bottom three team to competing within their division now against the Panthers? So what I think it is is really a change of mentality in the GM. The GM before him going into this offseason was actually continuing the rebuild. And once uh, Zach got in, he really attacked free agency hard and picked up a number of star players, such as Steven Jackson, Carson Palmer from the Saints, not Saints, it would have been the Chiefs last season, and just kept getting studs, stud players through free agency and trade. He, I, they actually have one of the best back two safeties, in my opinion, with Harrison Smith and Jerry Bird, just based off of their youth. Yeah, I think it's fair. I mean, Stuart, what, what's your take on the Saints this year from, uh, you know, from over the, uh, the other conference as well? Uh, is it a surprise to you or...? You expected it. I, because of who the GM is, like I said, I'm not surprised. Um, the the amount of uh, free agent signings uh, that were done were rather uh, incredible. Uh, he certainly had a lot of success there. 
not so much there wasn't so much movement in the trade market but when you're getting you know uh free agents that are as, as Tosi said a lot of studs uh, why do you need to go in and trade? Um, I mean, he got um, Camilleri at, uh, as a tackle. I think that's been very helpful for prote pass protection. Uh, I'm sorry, Karamini. Uh, Karami oh, my God, I can't even talk anymore. Karimi. Um, Karimi. <laughs> uh, you know, we all do the best we can. <laughs> sorry, that's um, not as bad as me. Um, it, but, you know, the question is, how is that going to translate in the long term? Um, you know, it looks to me that it's going to translate well. Uh, most of the free agents are signed for many years. Um, of course, they're signed at higher level contracts, which me means at some point in time uh, that depth may go away. But for right now, it's looking real pretty. Yeah, I mean, I have to, I have to agree with you, you both. I think if I if I have said where the Saints were in the offseason with Zach coming in, I thought. That it might take Zach one season to get to get things right to to go from probably being a you know middle of the pack team to to being a, a contender is where I felt. I mean, I I think there's still question marks as to whether this team is a contender yet because we've seen them suffer some losses to the Titans and the Panthers. Granted, very close losses, but we've seen them lose to some of the teams that I I would say are probably in the in the upper tier of of the CSFL at the moment. I think completely agree with your assessment. I think getting Carson Palmer was an absolute bargain, in my opinion, just because he's a half decent quarterback. Zach can basically run a playbook as best as anyone in, in the league. So it's not surprising that he's having a career season to date. I would say, you know, there's also some other unrated deals. We, we haven't talked about Steven Jackson, who they got on a one year deal, who's probably one of the best running backs in the league. Granted, he's, he's a little bit older now. But he's still he's still up there in terms of ability, and I would, I mean, just to give you some stats as well to sort of support this, they are the number two best offense in terms of points scored in the in the league this year. They are also the number one pass defense team in terms of yardage from that. So they're getting some things right to date. Five and two, the record. As I said, the two losses they've had against the Titans and the Panthers are probably, I think even Zach would admit. Uh, uh, probably expected losses albeit very tight losses but you know five and two from where they are at the mid-season mid-season um, position bit of a better schedule coming up I guess the question toasty on my mind to ask you is can this Saints team push the Panthers for that division title this year They have the defense to do it I, I'm not sure if their offense is exactly where Zach wants it in terms of receivers like tight ends and wide receivers but if he if he's able to pick up some more receivers I think he could give the Panthers a real run for their money because he has the defense to stop their offense now he just needs the offense to match their offense and and Stuart what, what's your view on on the Saints do you think they can they'll be a wild card team or do you think they'll they'll take the division against the Panthers this year I, I think they're probably looking at a wild card, uh, but it's going to be close. I, I don't put anything back beyond Zach. Um, I mean, he, he runs, as you said, one of the best offenses, and I'm a bit jealous, of course, that you know, he's got Carson Palmer, who we traded a couple of years ago. So, uh, <laughs> But uh, we were in rebuild mode, so it, it's nice to see uh, Bengal doing well elsewhere. Uh, but uh, I think he's going to be um, doing fine. I would just be concerned with the Saints right now. They have a one and two road record. The question is, can they only do their magic at home, or can they start correcting that uh, their road woes? Yeah, and they'll need to sort that out in the next five weeks um, because four of their games are going to be on the road against Jacksonville, San Francisco, Tampa Bay, and, and Chicago. So it's going to be a great. Well, San Francisco for them. should not be much of a ch challenge for them, but yes, and San Francisco shouldn't be much of a challenge, but yes. I mean, it, it, a lot's going to depend on that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I think Zach's done a phenomenal job. I mean, it's it's always interesting when uh, I think when we see a GM go from a team that's probably a contender from every single season that Zach's been in charge to a team that that needed a complete overhaul and to do it so quickly definitely earns some some kudos in in, in my book. So 
we've talked about the Saints. We've we've talked a little bit about Kansas City. Stuart, what team have you got on the cards for us next to chat about? Well, let's go to the other end for a moment. I, I, um, let, let's talk about a, a team that's kind of surprised me negatively. And, and that, that would actually, uh, I would have to go with New England. Um, this is a team that I, I think was expected to compete for wild card positions, uh, certainly potentially even um, win the division uh, that they're in. Um, I mean, they have the Bills and the, the Dolphins and the Jets, and the Jets are not a team that are going to be contending anytime soon. But New England, I, I did not expect to be right now behind Miami, nor did I expect them to be at a 2-4 and four record. Um, they, they've they got, what, 153 points. They've scored 140 against. They're 0-3 on the road, only 2-2 two and two in the conference, 1-1 one one in the division. Um, not entirely certain what's going on there, um, but I can you know, tell you what's happening. Toasty, yeah. break it down for us. What 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 do you think is happening with the Patriots? Three of their four losses, Russell Wilson was hurt. Ah. Um, so I guess the question we need to be asking then about the New England Patriots, given their their record and performance to date, is how reliant are they on Russell Wilson to make that offense tick? And is that going to be the Achilles heel in this New England Patriots franchise until they address that problem? I think, I don't think they need Russell Wilson to make him tick. I just don't think Brian Hoyer is the answer there as a backup. What's your thoughts, Stuart? Well, I mean, Russell Wilson uh, played against the Bengals last week. So, I mean, he was there and, uh, they got 20 points. Uh, he was, what, uh, one touchdown, one interception. Um, so he's there. I, I think there's a little bit more to it than just Russell Wilson. I mean, Brandon, Brian Hoyer obviously is not, you know, what I would call a, a stud at, uh, um, at the backup position. But he's certainly not bad. I mean, it's, uh, I mean you're looking at someone with a, a, a strong arm, strong accuracy. Uh, better than average uh, intelligence. So um, I think there's something more there. I don't know if it's a game planning issue or what, but uh, I think that Hoyer is more than serviceable. Yeah, so for, for me, I think there's there's two challenges here. One, I, I, I completely agree with your argument that Hoyer is probably, he's not that terrible a backup quarterback. I mean, in most systems, he'd be fine. I mean, he... he if you look at the three games he's played, he's put up 20 plus points. So that's that's not necessarily too bad of a performance from your backup. But I think the thing that we need to look at with the Patriots is, is the defensive side. They are 18th in terms of points allowed, but it's mainly because that pass defense is only ranked 13th in the league. And when you actually look at the roster construction, I think the thing that surprises me is that they're very, very light on, on the back situation. So obviously they've they've got the the likes of, of of Page and Goldson in in terms of the safety positions, which is fine. But in terms of the cornerback position, the thing that worries me there is they've got Blake McCourtney, obviously two of two of the uh, the main guys there, and then they've got two backups. I would say, in my opinion, um, Johnson and Lawson, who really aren't aren't good enough to be on a starting rotation. And then add into the fact that you've got the uh, the likes of Goldston now out for a couple of weeks with a dislocated shoulder. And they're having to put in someone like an Allen, who's probably probably serviceable for a game or two. Or maybe, yeah, probably serviceable for a game or two. But again, he's probably not a starter you'd want every week. So for me, I think that's the main issue for this Patriots team, is that they just can't stop the pass effectively because their back situation is is not deep enough and not talented enough to, to survive against some of the, the teams that they've played in particular. In terms of you look at the losses, um, you know, they're, they're teams that have, do have a pretty okay pass offense. And I think that's been the, the crux of the New England Patriots problem. So I guess in terms of, of that, Toasty, what, what's your view? Because obviously you're in their division, so you probably follow the Patriots a lot more than, than we do. Is there anything else that you, you're seeing there or, or anything that we may have, may have overlooked? So with the Patriots as a very... 
I think what it hurts them the most is actually their turnovers. Along and when Russell goes out, Hoyer comes in and he is a little bit more turnover prone than Russell. But yeah, their depth isn't there on defense like it is on offense. And the thing that might actually be hurting the most is lack of solid linebackers. Because right now they have Williams, who is decent, Chandler Jones, who is okay, and then they there's a big drop-off, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, there's only four linebackers there. Obviously, Christian Jones is, is, is sort of, I think he's out injured at the minute. So then you're relying on Williams, who's not actually that bad, um, and, and Lang and, and Timmons. I mean, Stuart, did you agree with that assessment that the uh, the linebacking situation is is kind of uh, one of the struggling areas for this Patriots team? Well, let me take a look here. Um, as the Patriots are not, like, they're only four linebackers deep. And that, you know, that could be fine. I, I wonder, and again, I haven't looked at him in as great a depth as, you know, perhaps uh, Toasty has. But um, I, I wonder with, you know, the endurance rates uh, that they have, and what uh, you know, and now Christian Jones is injured, um, whether or not they're deep enough at that position. I mean, looking at their... Uh, you know, safety positions, they they seem to be reasonable. Uh, so I, I, I would tend to agree that it looks like the linebacker position is uh, a, a definite weakness of this team. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say they've spent most of their money up top in terms of that defensive line, the front line. I mean, they've got Harvey, uh, Goiton and, uh, and Dorsey in there as sort of the ends. And then obviously they've got um, Darius as well in terms of defensive tackle, the uh, former sort of top pick, and Lewis Guy. So for me, I, I'm surprised they haven't tried sort of moving maybe a couple of those guys into different positions, not just in the front um, front line of that defense, just to see if that gave them any sort of additional benefit. I, I would certainly be trying that because they don't have the cap situation to just go and maybe take on a bigger contract for a, an elite linebacker or an elite back to kind of fill that that void. So I think, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, the Patriots. I, I think their schedule is going to be particularly challenging as well when I look at it. So they've got, obviously, the Ravens next week. Then they've still got to play, obviously, yourself, Toasty with the Bills again. Still got to play the Broncos, the Dolphins who are above them at the moment, and obviously the Titans and the Giants as well. So they've got a bit of a tricky schedule to navigate to get themselves out of this 2-4 and four records to probably be in the hunt for a for a wild card slot is i mean stuart do you think it's possible for this patriots team or do you, do you think it's probably just a step too far now at this point it may be a step too far but again they got some games ahead of them that are are very winnable uh i mean i see uh the jets on their schedule uh i see um uh, but I mean, you know, they've got to play still Buffalo twice. Um, you know, they've got uh, to play Washington, which will be should be a game they should win. They've got to play uh, who else here? Um, so they still got to play the Steelers as well. I think. I don't yeah, they still got to play the Steelers, which Steelers aren't playing well. So I mean, that that should be winnable. Um, so I mean. It really depends on, you know, it, they've got a couple of weeks. Maybe they can make a deal or two to get themselves a more solid linebacking crew or something uh, and, and maybe get back in there or figure out whatever it is on their, their defense that isn't working for them right now. But uh, I think that they can do it. Will they do it? It's going to they're going to have to turn it around quick. Yeah. And, and, and what, Toasty, what's, what's your thoughts on, on that? One thing that I'm seeing is. They should probably try moving Guyton back to linebacker because right now he is slotted at defensive end, and it looks like they have enough depth at defensive end where Guyton would be more helpful at linebacker. 
Yeah, I agree. I think that's what I was alluding to with, with sort of moving um, some of that front defensive line back into linebacker um, because they don't necessarily need him there. And I think he could probably be a rotation in, in the front line, but also play linebacker for them and maybe give them a bit of a push there. I still, my view is I, I think it's probably a step too far now. They've got too many tough games to come up and they'll have to be on top form for a lot of those games to kind of to get the win out. So I think... It might be one of the seasons where we don't see the Patriots in the wildcard slot just because of how competitive the AFC is this year. But we'll, we'll certainly see. Wilson's back now, so there's obviously more hope in that they'll be able to put up some serious numbers now that he's back and healthy. So we'll, we'll see We'll see how this Patriots team does. But it, I think it's going to be a tough, tough situation for Rizzo now. So that moves we us better, on. We better, we better hope he doesn't miss the playoffs because he'll get another... Uh, one overall lottery pick. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I'm, I'm not sure. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's let's see. Hopefully, we won't get commission, commissioner privilege with that one. But uh, let's let's move on to uh, to talk about another team, Toasty. And then, and, and who have you got on your your list to have a, have a chat about next? Um. So there's one team that has really surprised me, and that's the Texans. They've had the pieces for a long time but they could never really get them gelling. And now this season, it seems like they are gelling and wrecking havoc throughout, havoc throughout the league. Yeah, obviously the new GM, uh, Dijon, who's, who's been in the league before, um, has took over the tax Texans, I believe, towards the back end of last year. Thank you very much for taking over that team and ruining my what was probably a top 10 pick. Thank you very much for that. But uh, no, in all seriousness, yeah, the Texans have certainly been on an on a absolute storm this year. Five and two, only two losses against the Saints and the Broncos. I mean, how much toast did you put it down to the, the GM versus the pieces? You, you obviously mentioned the pieces in there, but obviously we know Dijon is, is, a, is a, a pretty good GM as well. I think it's a mixture of both. I think it's a good GM taking advantage of what he the situation that he has and is making the best out of it which we haven't seen with this Texans team for a while because it has seemed like they've had the pieces every season to be decent but they've been at the bottom to the middle of the league yeah and, and and Stu I guess what's what's been the sort of the driving force of this team for you? Do you feel it's been the, the offense or the defense or, or a bit of both for this Texans team so far? Um, it's a bit of both. Uh, they, they have some definite weaknesses still. Um, their rushing um, defense is not very good. It's only 27th in the league. But their pass defense, on the other hand, is third. Um, and then looking at their offense, they're, they're scoring a, a decent amount of points. But, uh, you know... Uh, but you're looking at what the ninth best rushing uh, offense, the but only the seventeenth best passing defense. So it, it feels like they're still operating at slightly off centered uh, where they could be. But there are definitely a great deal of pieces in place for this team, and once they figure out those two minor details, uh, so to speak, I, I think this team has the ability to go much further. Uh, Their schedule, from where I'm looking, lines up pretty well from there. Uh, They've got games against the Jets. they got games against the Browns. Um, Although they do have to play uh, the Raiders uh, yet. yet, And, uh, you know, the Jaguars are out there uh, in their last two games. So that's going to be, you know, it should be two very winnable games. So, I mean, I, I think they have a schedule that sets up very, very well for them at the end of the season. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a fair assessment. I think um, one thing I would say in terms of their weaknesses, if you're talking about the offense there, is that they still need to put together a bit more of a, a robust offensive line, in my opinion. They've got a couple of pieces that are pretty nice there in the likes of Sanders, uh, the likes of Bell and... Um, and Woody, who are pretty good offensive line, uh, offensive linemen, but I think they just need a couple of other pieces in there, really, to make that that rushing game more effective and to give some more time to Andrew Luck to to make those passes that he needs to make. I guess talks about the schedule in, in terms of their five and two notable win. I guess to date is against the the Titans, one of the, the the contenders in the league. I guess Toasty, the thing that's 
I'm looking at though on my screen in terms of the dashboard is that they have got a bit of an injury list now though. Yes, they I have an injury. What are their their injuries? But I don't feel like they will cripple the team for very long, since they're all between probable and doubtful, except for Golden Tate, who is out for six to eight weeks, which will probably put him out until the wild card round. But his schedule is very favorable, and to bank off of what. Stewart said his pass defense is very good and his rush defense isn't very good. We have seen teams in, such as myself last season who was near the top of the league in pass defense but near the bottom in rush defense. I believe it was like fifth in the league in pass defense and like 26th for rush defense. And we have seen teams like that make a run in the playoffs since the teams that are in the playoffs tend to be more pass heavy. Uh, yeah, and what, 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 do you, what do you make of that, um, Stuart? You so know, it, I, it, 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 it depends on the team. I mean, I think in the AFC that may hold true. Uh, but, I mean, you look at, uh, you know, the Lions you, uh, in the NFC and some of the other teams in the NFC and, and or even – for uh, you know, some other teams uh, where they rely pretty heavily on the run. I, I think that there's ways that it can be fixed on uh, the rush defense. Um, Golden Tate obviously is a huge loss, uh, but the rest of their team is healthy. Andrew Luck is you know probable next week, uh, so I don't see this with a favorable schedule. I see him getting in. How deep of a run they can make? Hard to say. And I guess, I guess, Toasty, do you feel that the the Texans are, are primed to take this division still? Then I guess talking about wild cards, are the Titans going to peg them back? I guess that's probably the only real competitor this year in in, in their division. Yeah, I think the Titans will um, surpass them, but I think the AFC West will be too busy beating up on each other, and the Texans will be able to squeeze past with a wild card spot. And they've already beaten the Titans once this year, uh, and they beat them pretty solidly, 49-24. But that loss of Golden Tate, I feel, is going to hurt them for the big games, yeah, it could, it such as well. versus the Chiefs, the Panthers, the Titans, and, yeah, the Raiders. I don't know if I said them. But, yeah, I see them taking – four, maybe five more losses this season and squeaking past with a wild card spot. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I if I was the Texans GM, I would be looking to try and basically get a one-year and one one year contract receiver in who's actually fairly decent just to cover Tate. And then basically that will give me enough leverage for the rest of the regular season whilst Tate is out. And then maybe give me a pretty decent three you know trio of wide receivers attacking options for for the playoffs that could could make it interesting especially if you've got you know you've got Andrew Luck in there he's probably one of the best you know best passing quarterbacks we've got in the league now so that that could hopefully give them a bit of a nudge up in in the uh the a AFC so we talked about Texans now I guess I'll open it up to both of you now at this point in, in terms of have you got another team that you would like to, to kind of you know flag at this point in the season? Any surprises or maybe just general league observations that you may have? I'm kind I of don't surprised. have a... Oh, go ahead. I'm kind of surprised Tosi hasn't mentioned the team that he mentioned before we started talking, which is the Giants. Yeah, we haven't mentioned the Giants, actually. We did talk about them quite extensively before we talked. Let's, let's talk about the Giants. That's probably a... A good one to dive into. So they're five and one. I mean, Stuart, I guess let's get your take on the Giants first, then, um, since you, since you brought them up. Five and one, just beat the Lions on on the uh, the sim today. Contender now. I mean, or... if that doesn't say that you're if that doesn't say you're for real, I don't know what is. I, I mean, they've beaten the Packers, they've beaten the Lions. Um, you know, they beat the Bills. 
Um, they o- their only loss right now is to the Cowboys. I mean, this team has, with Eli Manning leading it, has just been a, a, a delightful surprise for, for anyone who's in the <laughs> – <laughs> Not in the uh, NFC. <laughs> if you're in the NFC, uh, you're looking at a team that's generating 461 yards per game, first in the league. 461 yards. That's that's incredible. Um, <laughs> I mean, how can you not root for this team? Uh, their their defense is middling, uh, but I mean, look at their offensive stats. First yards per game, second pass per game, seventh rushing per game, sixth in points per game. This team, whatever has happened here, they've done something right, and this team is a is becoming a powerhouse. Um, I mean, they've got next week against the Bears, another you know uh, NFC North team. Uh, and I just I'm glad I, again I, I'm not playing them anymore in the NFC North, but um, you know they've got the Vikings in, in three weeks. Uh, um, so they, I mean, they've got some, you know, tough games out there, but this team is probably one of the most improved teams or, or that I've seen out there. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, before Tosi jumps in and, and talks about the Giants, I will say that obviously if we look at last season, Manning was injured for a, a considerable stretch of that season, which probably didn't help their, their chances last year. And he didn't necessarily have his best season to date in in a Giants jersey. This year, it seems like Eli Manning of old has basically come out and decided that he's going to have a class couple of stabs at the uh, at the title, in my opinion. I mean, he's, his quarterback rating is 131, 16 touchdowns to date, no interceptions. His pass rating, percentage-wise, is up there with, with some of his best seasons. Yards, he probably looks like he's maybe going to be fairly close to his second best ever yard performance um, in, in terms of passing. Looking good for the Giants, I have to say. They beat us today for fair and square, so congratulations on, on that and certainly certainly surprised us. I mean, I, I think I talked about the Giants last week as maybe a dark horse for, for the title this year. And Yeah, as you said, beat the Bills, beat the Lions. I mean, Toasty, what's your, what's your assessment on the Giants? So I'm just looking at their history now in the game, and it's kind of funny. Vince, I believe, has been their GM for quite a while. Well, for their first season, they were 12-4. and four. And then they regressed to seven and nine, and they bolted forward again at ten five and one, and then they regressed again at to six and ten, and then they bolted forward again with ten and six. Now their last season they were five and eleven, so it's been an up and down roller coaster with them, and falls right in line for them to make a playoff push. Yeah, so but I, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, go on. So yeah, maybe maybe Manning should get hurt more often so that uh, you know he can recuperate and be at uh, full strength, full of Tom Brady. I think last season with them running with Christian Ponder really hurt them. Like he was their best option at running, not running back, quarterback. But I wish I could have faced them with healthy quarterbacks because both of my quarterbacks got knocked out quite early in that game, so I was down to my third-string quarterback. But I really feel like they have found their groove, and Manning is in a contract year, so they could end up vaulting backwards again. This is a make it or break a season for them. Yeah, and obviously Manning being 35, who knows whether he suddenly decides to retire in the offseason. But for now, Giants six, uh, 5 and 1, sorry, are in, in great shape. I mean, when I look at the roster as well, I do like this roster. I mean, they've obviously got talent all over the place. I love their receiving options. I love their linebacking core. I love their defensive line. I mean, they've got two number one and number two picks in there, and Aaron Donald and, uh, and Richardson from, from last year. So they, there's talent all over this place, Stuart. I mean, on paper, it's looking good. Performances are looking good. You, do you feel they're they are in that contending tier one now, and they've they've made the statement in the first six games, or is there anything else that sort of you just want to see before you sort of maybe confirm that assessment? I think they're con- I think they're contenders, but I think they're contenders, but they do have one slight weakness, and I would say that's depth in the offensive line. 
right now it seems like they got five solid guys, and then behind that, they're kind of met. And and Stuart, what's what's your view on on the Giants as well? I think the the Giants this year are in it to win it, uh, and if they don't, it's going to be a, a, a long climb back for the Giants. Um, they have no, I mean, Christian Ponder is serviceable as a backup, but you know, next year, I mean, you're looking at Eli Manning and Croyle are both potentially gone next year. Um, you have half of this team that. Literally, they're in their contract years um, and will be how many of them will stay, how many will go. I don't know. Um, But this team is going to look very different next year. So uh, it it seems to me that if the Giants are going to pull it out, this is the year to do it. Uh, Beyond this year, the Giants are going to look very, very different. Yeah, I would say it's very reminiscent of the Carolina Panthers from last year. Obviously, slightly different situation in that they were going to be a different roster in some shape or form this year because of hard cap penalties. But, you know, when you look at the Giants on paper, look very good, got talent all over the place. Obviously, yeah, next season is going to be a completely different matter. But I, I have to say, Giants to me have now solidified themselves as a contender I, I mean I look at the schedule as well they've got coming up they've obviously got in terms of teams that I would say which should give them a challenge in terms of you know pushing them all the way obviously got to play the Cowboys again in, in, in week 12 that'll probably decide the division I think that one but you know you've got the uh, the likes of the Bears I, I mean let's not underrate the Bears I still think they're a good team even though they've had a, a slow start to this season and then the Patriots probably in week 17, at which point they'll probably be resting players if they've taken the division at that point. So I like the schedule. They they could well be a top two seed this year. That's the other thing I was I was thinking about. So that means they will have home court, um, you know, home home court home field advantage for the playoffs as well if they carry on in in this in this form. I mean, I'll start pro with with Toasty. Would it surprise you if the Giants got to a Super Bowl this year and and won, or or do you, do you feel on paper? They've got everything they need now, providing injuries, as you mentioned, stay healthy. Um, the, the, the schedule's looking pretty good for them. I think they can make a real push for the Super Bowl. I believe you'll see them in the final as one of the final four teams in the NFC. And from there, it's anybody's game. Yeah. And then, and Stuart, do you, do you think that's that's a fair assessment? or? I, I do. I mean, I still think the Lions are the team to beat. Of course, they just beat them. Um, but, you know, on paper, they look like they could be a pretty good battle. Um, and it may come down to a big play or two in that potential game. And then when you have Manning at quarterback, a big play or two is always always on the card, certainly. Yep, yeah, I agree. Giants, Giants are looking in great shape this year. So Vin Cowell's done a, a fantastic job um, to start this season off. So Stuart, you obviously talked about the, the Giants. I, I'll probably throw it over to Toasty, I think, next and say, you know, we've probably got... Is there any any other final team we would like to cover or just final observations from yourself before I, I hand it back over to Stuart? I really have another team, but I do have one player and they came out of this draft class and that Allen Robinson, who is having a stellar season, who leads the league in receiving touchdowns last time I checked, by a good mar- yep, by a good margin of five touchdowns. And so he has 25 catches, but 12 of them are touchdowns. That, that's a pretty, pretty good number. Um, 48% first down percentage as well. 12 touchdowns. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was. I guess the question, Toasty, before I asked you about him, is is, this, is is he the best wide receiver we've had come out of a draft class in terms of performance to date? Yes. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember what Odell's stats were. So, I mean, season. they are on the same team, it's fair to say. Odell and, and Robinson are on mm-hmm. the same team. So I, I'll I'll try and pull up um, Odell's stats from last year just to give you a sense of that as well. So, yeah, fifty uh, catches, ten touchdowns. 
A 68% first down percentage. 22 catches over 20 yards. I I do believe Robinson is better than Odell, and I'm kind of kicking myself for hmm. underrating him and not drafting him when I should have. I, I guess, yeah, in terms of your views of, of, of Robinson today. I mean, I think they that Robinson and Odell make each other better. I mean, how do you key on either one of them? Um, you know, I, I mean, if you key on one, the other one's going to burn you. Uh, so um, how much of it is um, the other receiver taking plays and how much it isn't? I don't know, but certainly the best wide receiver out of this particular draft. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Robinson's having a fantastic season. Obviously, he's got Cam Newton to throw to him, who we know is just a phenomenal pass quarterback in this league as well. So, yeah, props to uh, to Kyrus and for having that dynamic duo there. That's going to be an absolute nightmare for everyone to deal with, but it's fantastic to watch for the league and in, in, in terms of receivers coming through the draft who are actually performing up to some of the uh, the older receivers that we've had in the league for a little while. So, Stuart, I guess, have you got a, a final team or a final player or a final observation for us for this podcast? I guess the only thing I wanted to note... I'm sorry, Toasty? One thing that I wanted to note on Robinson is he is just five touchdowns away from tying the league record for receiving touchdowns. Wow, Wow. that's crazy. Already, We're not even halfway through the season. That's mad. That's nuts. (laughs) So, so Stuart, Um, what have you got for us? I guess we'll go back to another disappointing team. I, 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 I guess I shouldn't say that they're disappointing in the sense that this team was not going to be good anyway. Uh, or, or, but I didn't think that they would be b- that bad, which is the, the, the Rams. I mean, they're zero and seven. I know that uh, you know you uh, uh, are not very high on Chris on uh, uh, on uh, Bridgewater, but I mean. Oh, and seven is is pretty paltry. I mean, you should be able to squeak a game here or there, but I, I think we might be looking at a, uh, an zero and sixteen team here now. And and <laughs> apologies, Toasty, for this one, but who better than talk about zero and sixteen teams than Toasty? What have you got for us on the uh, the Rams? So I see two potential shots at a win. This uh, this season, and that'd be next week against the Buccaneers, and then after that, it'd be Week 14 versus the 49ers. As for going 0 and 16, it is incredibly hard to do it. But looking at their stats, they are dead last in points per game, second to last in yards per game, 27th in points allowed they have been getting carved up and can't get really anything going yeah if they're gonna go 0 and 16 i hope that the gm will stick through it will stick through the rebuild but i uh i think they're running the wrong scheme for bridgewater yeah i mean i i I think that's that is pretty much hitting the nail on the head in in my opinion. So so Eddie has been the GM of the the Rams for a long period of time now. So I'm, I have no doubt that he will stick it through and and probably be hoping for a little bit of lottery luck in the off season, um, given where the Rams are. But I have to agree. I think it is scheme and game plan more than actual personnel because I look at this team and I, I don't mind it as much. I mean I'm not a massive Bridgewater fan. I just as you said, Toasty, probably need a different playbook for him, and he's not my type of quarterback personally. But you know, they've got receiving options. Edelman, uh, Jernigan are, are fine receivers. Their offensive line is actually not too bad. They've got um, some fairly uh, fairly decent tackles and guards and centers that they can move around, and they can put a five offensive line out there that's probably good enough to start for most teams in the league. And the back situation and and de- defensive line is actually fairly good. I mean, I like Walker. And Bowers is sort of the the edge end players, and the linebacking core is pretty good. Obviously, it's led by Berry and, and Jones, and that, that that's in good shape. And the back situation is fine. So for me, I think it's more game plan and scheme than I do personnel. But I guess Stuart, what's your view on 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 the Rams 
how how would you try and get those at least get one or two wins on the board for this season? Well, I, I think I think you hit it on the head. I, I think that a new offensive playbook is where it starts. They're actually not horrendous on defense. They're thirteenth on the rush defense in the league. Um, which, you know, tells me that, you know, again, there might be some uh, scheming issues, but I mean, they're, even their losses, I know it shows, you know, what, 30 points a game against them, which is for 27th, but I have to wonder when you look at it, I mean, a lot of these games are actually closer than they would appear. The only real two bad blowouts were the Panthers and the Broncos. So we got a 45, 10 and a, 56 14. I'm sorry. There was also a Raiders 33 3. Um, but I mean, you've got a 28 16 to the Saints, a 17 16 loss to the, the 49ers, uh, 20 to 10 to the Chiefs. So there's some things that are still there and going right, but um, you're going to have to find a way to work with uh, uh, Bridgewater and Anderson, um, find a way to get the ball, these receivers, and, and possibly just try as as say a couple different playbooks but i think there's potentially two three four wins that are out there yes obviously it's easiest to say the 49ers and the buccaneers um but i i mean i think they can at least make themselves presentable in some of these other games as well um and and start using this time to figure out how to work with bridgewater himself Yeah, and I guess Toasty, over to you for final thoughts on the uh, the Rams. This season is a loss for him, so I would honestly suggest just messing around, trying all sorts of new things with playbooks and whatnot, because that's what I did to fi- find my playbook during my seasons where I was did not have the roster. I played around, found the best playbook and then I got the players that would make that playbook the most dangerous yeah I think that's, that's fair to say if it is a, a lost cause of a season it's trying to build something for, for next season to come back with a bang um, completely agree with that so I think that kind of brings us to a close for the, the mid-season review of, of the CSFL and, and some teams that have been doing exceptionally well some teams that maybe have been struggling but Stuart and Toasty, it's been been great to have you both on the show. Best of luck with the remaining season for, for both of you. Certainly will be interesting to see how the rest of the CSFL plays out. But um, yeah, best of luck with the Bills and best of luck with, with the Bengals. And I'm sure we'll be back near a playoff time to to discuss some of the, uh, you know, the tiebreakers that as always occur and some of the craziness in terms of division leads and, and so on at that point. But uh, we'll leave you for now as we we continue moving on with the second half of the CSFL season. It's been fun. It's been fun.